When you're saving your artwork or logos in Illustrator, you're going to want to know all the different types of file formats that include transparency. So in this video, I'm going to walk through how I would save out each of those different formats and some of the different features that are in Illustrator to save out your artboards or your assets and image files and vectors with a transparent background. So the first thing we want to look at here, and I've just got the pixel and bracket logo on an artboard. This artboard is 1080 by 1080 pixels, but that part doesn't really matter quite as much. If we look up in the view dropdown and go down to show transparency grid, that's where we're going to see what is actually transparent on our document. So that's how we can make sure that the background isn't actually white. It's in fact transparent. We go back up to view and we can hide that transparency grid. So the other thing we want to be aware of is if this is for print, then you're going to want your file type in CMYK. So when you created it, or you might want to convert it, and I'll show you how, to CMYK. If it's for web, you're going to want it in RGB or any sort of digital format. Now, when we save out these files, that will convert on its own depending on the file format that we're using. So if we look up in the file drop down and go down to document color mode, that's where we can convert this between CMYK and RGB. In this case, I'm going to assume you're looking for some kind of print production um, exporting. So we're going to leave it on CMYK. And when we get to the PNG, that's going to save as RGB because PNGs are only in RGB color mode. Okay, so the first things first, we want to go file, save as. That's shift, command, or control S. You might want to remember that one. And we can save as an Illustrator file. That's the basic working document format for Illustrator. It does include transparency. If you're sending that off and they're going to need to get into your file and work with the layers or another designer is going to be working on things, that's the file format you want to save. Next up, I would say is EPS. And this is my favorite format for saving vector artwork with a transparent background or really with or without a transparent background in any, any way. Uh, EPS is just the one that I tend to send, the one that um, you know printers will use to scale up and scale down your artwork as needed without losing any quality. So we can do EPS and we can hit use artboards or we don't have to hit use artboards. I'm gonna go ahead and check it because it's gonna save two files and I'll show you what each of those are. And one of them is if you didn't have it checked. And the other one just sort of adds on because I check it. So we're going to hit save. And that's going to pop up the EPS options dialog. Up here, you can back save it to different versions of compatibility if needed. More than likely, you're just going to save it with the Illustrator 2020 or whatever your latest Illustrator uh, version is. This preview format here is going to be what people can basically see when they preview the file. So I want to include the transparency and TIFF, 8-bit color is fine. When we look at some of the other options, I tend to just leave these as default. One in particular, though, you'll notice some warnings at the bottom about fonts. You might want to embed your fonts. I, I would say ideally, if it's not a working file and you're just saving this out and exporting it as EPS, you're going to want to outline all of your fonts so that Whomever is using this document doesn't run into any font issues because they don't have the same fonts as you. But you can also embed fonts, and so that might be helpful for them to open up the document or print the document or utilize it without running into those issues. That's all really for the EPS settings. We're going to hit OK. It's going to write the format, and then if we look where we saved it into my little assets folder, I actually have two EPS files now. This file right here, notice how there is no um, artboard outside of our document. That's how the EPS file would have saved only this file if we didn't check use artboards. Now, I also checked use artboards, and what that did is it kept the document uh, size essentially outside of the asset that was on the artboard. So this file here is transparent all the way around, even though it shows white, it is it does retain the transparency, but it also retains the exact size of my artboard in case that's something you want. Now, I'll open this up. You can just click and drag a file like that into Photoshop. It's going to ask you how you want to rasterize this. It is in CMYK. That's totally fine. 
hit OK, and you'll see here that it does have all that transparency where the artboard was. So that EPS file may render the preview showing white so that you can see whatever's on the document, but that's okay. It does have that transparency as long as your document itself has the transparency. Now, an easier one to share with clients is PDF, and we can go same thing, save as, and we'll just click down to PDF and hit save. Now this is gonna pull up the save uh, save Adobe PDF options. Not a whole lot here you need to worry about. If you want to view the PDF after saving, you can click this one. Because this is just an asset or just a logo, we're not worried about anything like marks and bleeds. We don't need to do any sort of compression because this is a vector file, and so this is going to be scalable. We're not rasterizing. It's not made up of pixels. It's it's like made up of math. That's what vector files are. Um, compatibility, you might change to the latest Acrobat, but you know, if you need to back save, once again, that's where you're going to do it. And you can hit save PDF. And now if we go over to our spot, notice here, we got the PDF. We can preview it. Simple as that. If we open it up, it's going to open up uh, Acrobat Reader or Acrobat Pro, whatever you have. Same thing. Now, all of this looks like it doesn't have transparency, but it really does. If you pull this PDF into Photoshop, it's going to open up. It's going to give you a couple options. You can crop it to the bounding box, which will crop it like without the artboard, or you can crop it to the media box, which means with the artboard. Hit OK, and it's going to look exactly the same. In fact, I have two documents open here. One's the EPS, one's the PDF. They're exactly the same as each other. Um, so both include transparency. Back to Illustrator. Last file format that's, it is used. But in my opinion, it's rarely used, um, back to save as, of course, is SVG. Now, you can save as an SVG file, and same thing here. You can preserve Illustrator editing capabilities if you have other layers and stuff in there, or um, or not. You can just uh, keep it as is. It, it will sort of uh, flatten that in essence, but it will remain a vector with that transparent background. So you can save that one as well. So you have a PDF, you have EPS, AI, you have SVG, all of these stay vector. So that's the important part here is all of those file formats are scalable. So depending on if you want to get back in there and utilize it, if you take that document into something like Photoshop, as long as it's a smart object, you can scale it up and down, it's going to retain those crisp edges. And then if you're sending it off, the size then, the actual pixel size of the document doesn't matter as much. You're just going to need to work with whomever to help them scale it. Let's say it's going on a t-shirt to the appropriate sizing. Now, last but not least here, we got PNG. Now, PNG is a rasterized file. It means it's not going to be vector, which means whatever size you save it at, that's the highest quality size that it can be at. You don't want to scale up from there. You can scale down, but you don't want to scale up. So you want to make sure you save the appropriate sizes. I saw a question on a video that was sort of related to this one. Someone asked, like, what is, like, a standard size you should save your P PNG at? Here's the way I, th I think of it in backwards terms. I think, what's the size that this is going to be? Where is it going to be represented, Right. Is it going to be something that I put as an icon on a social media site? Is it going to be on a website? Is it going to be utilized in some way in a larger format? That's what I need to know first, and then I can know what size I should save my PNG as. Before you know that information, it really doesn't matter. I mean, save it as a PDF for someone to preview. You don't need to save a PNG for that purpose. But once you do know that information... There's a couple ways that we can save. First, I can go up to File, down to Export, not Save As, down to Export. You can do Save for Web, which is a legacy format. If we look at that really quick, and I say le I, legacy format's not correct, it's a legacy uh, setting, which means it may go away at some point. But it does give you a lot of options over here to save this out or export it. And one of them is PNG24, which is the highest quality PNG you can Make sure you keep that transparency, or you can get rid of the transparency. I don't know why you would for PNG. I would keep the transparency, and then you can adjust the size of it exactly right here as you need. 
Once you're done with that, go down and hit save and you can just save it into here. Now, that saves the artboard just like that. The newer version of exporting in Illustrator is actually the export assets or in this case, export for screens. That's gonna pull up the export for screens uh, dialog box. Assets we'll get to in a second, but if we look at artboards, we have that artboard and we can check it to make sure it's selected. If you have multiple artboards, you can export lots of things at once with this. We make sure we select where it's going to save. Same folder, assets. We can open that location after export, so it'll just pop open your uh, finder window. Or, or, or also, we can create subfolders here, and you can select the subfolders by format or by scale. And that just really is whatever your own needs are. I'm going to keep it on format so that it creates one PNG folder with different sizes in there. And with the different scales, we can select how the uh, scale is applied. Is it just like a one, two, or three X of the document size? Or do we want to select a very specific width on this? Or even height or resolution in this case. So I'm going to show you here, this is 1x PNG, which means it's just going to be the size that my document is, which I think is 1080 by 1080. Or we can shrink that down to 100 pixels wide. I have these two formats here. You could just have one if you wanted. And I'm just going to hit export artboard. Now it's going to create a folder by format, which is PNG. And I have my two sizes here. One is 1080 by 1080. The other is really small because it's only 100 across. Now that PNG included the entirety of the artboard. If you just want to export your logo, so it's like the size of the PNG is the exact size of the logo, that's going to be export assets. And if we open up the assets, asset export panel, this is kind of a new one in, uh, in Illustrator. We can actually, it says right here, we can drag artwork to this panel to export those assets. So we can drag that artwork over here, and now it does not include that entire artboard. It just includes the asset, the element that you drug over to the asset export. Same kind of stuff down here. We can select different scaling, and also we can open back up the export for screens dialog. So once we've plugged in an asset or even multiple in here, we can open that back up and notice how we have our artboard, but we also have assets. And you can see the difference. If you look at that thumbnail, the artboard includes that space, the white space around the entire artboard. The asset only includes what we drug in there, that vector element, but all the settings are the same and we can hit export asset. And it might've put it into this folder. Yeah, because we had it go into that PNG folder. But we have asset one and asset two, or three X right here. Asset one was one X, asset two is gonna be three X the size. That's what we had set up in there. So that's how you can sort of size those up and down. But all in all with PNGs, you can make your asset the correct size. You can select a specific size in that asset export. Um, Either way, that's how you're going to get the PNG sizing that you want out of Illustrator. And, of course, PNGs include transparency. Now, we can do the same thing. I just want to show you we can't. I mean, this is all about transparency. But we can do that same thing, export for screens, assets, artboards, doesn't matter. The format can be JPEG as well out of here. So if for whatever reason you need a JPEG image, um, you can do that, but it's going to look like this with no transparency. JPEG has no transparency. So if you at, if you export the asset, it's just going to be this size, but there's going to be white in there. Or if you export the artboard, it's going to be this size, but all the white you see here is going to be white. So transparency is going to turn into a white background on a JPEG. If you need a, a rasterized transparent file, PNG is what you need to save that as or any of those other formats that keep the vector, um, basically keep the vector alive within your document. So those are all the formats and different things and how to save transparency 
in Illustrator. If you guys have any questions, if I missed anything or maybe I went too quickly through something, uh, hit me up down below. But those are all the type of formats that I save out. Uh, mainly, I'll save an EPS, I'll, I'll save an AI file, right? I've got to save that working file. I'll save out an EPS file, and that's generally what I want. Um, you know, the the post production type, of the production people to use on whatever it is, whether they're making signage for the wall or they're putting something on a t-shirt, anything like that. I want it to be EPS because I want it to retain that vector format and be scalable, right? That's high quality. It's the highest quality you can get. I can save a PDF if, if I have other people attached to the email that I know maybe don't have access to the programs or the preview capability. A lot of times that EPS file for like a normal computer, like someone that has a PC computer and they're trying to preview it. They can't open it. They don't have a program to open it. They're not like a creative person. I'll save the PDF just so that they can kind of see what's going on. Worst case scenario, the PDF does include the vector as well. So like the PDF could be used in the same way the EPS file can be used. And then last is that PNG. I really only use PNG if I know specifically I need a PNG file for, for something in particular. And that's when I'll save the, the PNG. So all of that said, um, you know, I ho hope you guys understood most of this. Oh, I know I know a, 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 a potential instance when I would save PNG, for instance, when we do live streams for Pacers Gaming, we'll save like overlays and stuff for the live stream. And a lot of times I'll have maybe a space for like the video to show through when the overlay is on top of it. That cutout is a transparent cutout. And in a program like OBS or any live streaming program, I'll put the video behind that transparent cutout. And that, that image just has to be a PNG because that program doesn't utilize any of these other formats we've been talking about. So that's, that's an example when I would use a PNG. All right, guys, I'm done talking. I'm Spencer from Pixel, Pixel and Bracket, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.